G'day everyone, uh, this is Brett Stiff, and uh, today I'm going to be doing uh, just a Stiffy edition today, and uh, Harvey Hardy's not going to be in this one, and I figured I might uh, try something different instead of the usual making fun of, um, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's for having JPEG jump scares. Uh, I did get my money back, by the way, in case you were wondering, and um, I've been seeing these people uh, uh, looking at this show, um, this show that I think, you know, I might, I might like. Um, it's called My Little Horse, or something like that. You know, and I thought, you know, I like you know, children's cartoons, I find them entertaining, so uh, I figured, um, you know, why not give it a shot? Uh, I, I like things like, uh, you know, Spongebob, uh, Spongebob Pants, and um, Amazing World of, um, Amazing World of Bubblegum. Uh, you know, they're all, they're all pretty good shows, so I thought I might give this a, sh give this a shot. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, you know, give my uh, first impressions of the first episode as I was watching it. Um, thank you guys. If you made it to the end without crying, then uh, you deserve a medal. So, after a while of searching for a copy of the first episode that didn't require me to pay someone money, uh, I ended up with one that had an abundance of watermarks. Uh, beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. The show pushes us right into the poo with this one. Before we can even lick the jam between our toes, we're thrust into a pool of exposition. Putting it simply, there's this place called Equestria, and there are two horses in the sky. The white horse is the queen of white, and the black one is the queen of black. Together with their awesome power, they can make the colour grey. Splendid. Uh, I guess the horses of Equestria like that colour, because uh, just by the two sky horses doing this crap, it seems to get everyone, you know, docile, and prevents everyone committing a murder or, or something. I wasn't paying attention. Then suddenly, ah, the black sky horse is angry because she accused the white one of not paying her rent on time. The white one is like, no way man, I can't go to prison again, and then murders her black sister and pretends like, like nothing ever happened. How could she produce the colour grey without her sister? I'd very much like to know. So anyways, we then get introduced to a character who's like, How far can I throw this book? Then what happens next is possibly the most girly intro sequence I have ever seen. Oh, it's my little pony. Oh, hmm. okay. So here the episode begins, and this demon pony is toting the book, which some people call the Necronomicon. Um, when a bunch of other ponies uh, come up to her to invite her to some sort of um, what seems like a group sexual thing. I don't know. I mean, it sounds like it. Just take a listen. Moon Dancer is having a little get together in the West Castle courtyard. You want to come? Oh, come on, how can it not be that? Any hoodly doodle, this pony named Starscream, I think, has to rush home because she left her cousin in the oven for too long. <sighs> come on, just get your stuff organized, Starscream. You're an independent woman. So Starscream goes home and accidentally knocks over her slave dragon. <laughs> That's what you get for standing in front of doors. Idiot. The turd named Pinhead purposely goes out of his way to destroy Starscream's birthday present from her dead grandmother. She gets really understandably furious and reaches for a book of spells to see if she can make him extraordinarily fat, when she stumbles upon some other books for some reason that show her prophecy. The prophecy states that the black sky horse from before is going to be summoned soon, and if Starscream wants to live up to her dream of being an almighty demon lord, she has to gather five virgins and sacrifice them to the black sky horse. Which is alright, because each of the village idiots happen to be virgins, so she breathes a sigh of relief. You see, it's around this point that I started having troubles with the show, because not only do they have stupid puns like, I thought that was just an old pony's tail, which gave me conjunctivitis, but they even go as far as having a scene where Starscream gets a letter from the Fuhrer saying that she's a doo-doo face. It's this kind of humour that kids are growing out of these days. The writers really need to start raising their standards for kids if they want to keep it up. So now, Starscream is on the lonely road with Pinhead for company. Although she may as well be riding along with, um, I don't know, Roald Dahl or someone? No. Okay, if anyone is wondering why I hate Spike so much, uh, his name is actually Spike, by the way, not Pinhead, I made that up. 
but I hate him so much because I have a personal quarrel with the origin of Spike. You see, Spike came from the story of my grandfather's friend, who fought in the French Revolution. His name was Spike Lee. He was flying a plane over an island of native women. Spike Lee's plane then crashed and he survived. However, for ten years, he was held captive as the island women's slaves, doing their very bidding. When he was discovered, he was never the same again. And to think that they used his story for this character makes my blood boil. <sighs> anyway, Starscream comes across a town and begins her search for the virgin sacrifices. She ends up finding one. However, this is where the plot gets interesting. This character sees through her demonic cloaking spell and screams in terror before running away. But more on that later. <laughs> Cliffhangers. Next up is an apple farm. She remembered that one of the virgins owned the farm and thought she might catch her with her guard down. But big surprise, the idiot invites her in anyway. I don't know, poor writing I suppose? Uh, this character's name is Creamer Wheat. Kind of a cute name, but not very clever considering she's on an apple farm. If I were to name her, I would have called her... I don't know... Applejack or something? This Creamer character decides to invite Starscream into her cult that uh, worships the almighty apple tree. Uh, Starscream tries to reject the offer as she is a higher being than these peasants. That is an actual quote from the show, by the way. But Creamer decides to go along with initiation anyway and provides a buffet. But, you know, not wanting to blow her disguise as a normal horse, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> pony, she accepts to stay for a bit. I understand what they were going for with Crema Wheat. They wanted to make her the equivalent of the typical attractive farm girl. You know the type, you always see them in the movies. They ended up getting something with the same personality, but it's hard to picture the same thing considering she's a pony and all. But don't worry, if you're looking for something physically attractive with this character, the internet is for you. Moving on. Next stop is to find a Pegasus named Blue Streak, whose job is to create clouds to provide the town with rainwater. Uh, it doesn't go into how she's able to do this, but I guess it doesn't matter. Now, probably my favourite thing about this bit is how they meet. It's hilarious. It's like Blue Streak ran out of fuel and crash landed onto Starscream. With Starscream covered in mud, Blue Streak laughs like a bitch and helps wash the mud off her. And here's something else I noticed. There's another weird sex innuendo here. The show's rampant with them, just take a listen. My Starscream gets messy hair after her rain blow mm -hmm. Excuse me. And Blue Streak ends up laughing again. I understand Blue Streak laughing because she doesn't understand the power Starscream actually has under that cutesy disguise. But Spike, that was a bad move. You're gonna get a whooping when you get home, buddy. Ow, right in the it's funny, all this happened before Starscream even had a chance to explain herself. This next bit confused me a little. Starscream convinces Blue Streak to quit her job somehow. It's still sort of not clear how she does. Then Blue Streak goes through the sky and destroys all the clouds she created just so that she could, and I quote, stick it to the man. Which is funny because the only man I remember seeing is this guy. Is she talking about him? Probably, I don't know. What are you asking me for? Anyway, moving on. Starscream goes to see another virgin who is known as Singularity. This one, uh, this, this one, okay, you, no, no, you know what, I couldn't be bothered describing what happens here, okay, it's pretty boring, right? this character is like if Barbie had a baby with Brat, okay, Singularity wants to fix Starscream's hair cause girls, Spike sweats out bodily organs to defy gravity, the end, not really much in this scene, okay, actually no, you know what, there, <laughs> yeah, there is something. Moving on, next place she goes. Starscream comes along my favourite character, Butterfly Shy Guy. She's my favourite for two reasons. Reason A, she produces some of the most beautiful music I have ever heard. Follow me please. A one, a two, 
A one, two, three. And reason two, she is very shy, which means she shuts up most of the time. She ends up taking a shine to Spike and gives him attention. This is possibly one of the worst things you can do, because now he's going to get drunk off this and think he's all that. Little piece of fecal matter, you are nothing. Butterfly Shy Guy follows them all the way to the library, where Starscream plans on calming her superior mind for talking to inferior minds. Now here is where the plot becomes interesting again. She goes into the library, but feels something is off. She says something is holding her powers back. A very strong and uncomfortable aura surrounds her. Then suddenly the lights switch on. The entire town is in the library holding a surprise party. Who could have done this? Why did they do this? Well, do you remember a while back, Starscream met a pony who screamed and ran away? Precisely, this party was hosted by our good friend, Fairy Cake. This party was deliberately planned by the pony who saw through the demonic disguise. It was elaborately designed to withdraw power from Starscream, rendering her completely weak, all while fooling the entire town into thinking the party was real. Pretty clever. Starscream becomes so panicked that she nearly loses control of her disguise and quickly runs into the other room, claiming she has a stomach problem. After a while, she is trying to relax in the next room to preserve her power. Spike comes to check in and Starscream's disguise becomes so weak that she starts speaking in tongues. Which is uh, <laughs> admittedly kind of funny actually. I was actually genuinely invested at this point. I really wanted to know what happened to Starscream. How could she get out? Will she ever be the same? Will she ever be able to sodomize again? I had no idea. Anyway, on with the story. I won't leave you hanging. Just after nearly succumbing to Fairy Cake's party and fun tactic, Idiot comes in once again. He says that they have to stop the party right away as the Fuhrer has called an emergency town meeting. Starscream breathes a sigh of relief. It's a close one, huh? I mean, exciting stuff. They go to see what the fuss is about. When they arrive at the town hall, they wait to hear the news. The Fuhrer then comes out and informs them that she got a phone call from the White Sky Horse, saying that she will be coming down to Equestria for a surprise visit to conduct selective breeding. Oh, no, no, wait. <laughs> Before that, she makes a zinger. Phillies and gentle calls. <laughs> uh, I don't get it. Also, with Fairy Cake's influence down, Starscream takes this opportunity to conduct a mind control spell and make her absolutely crazy. The Fuhrer and Singularity then go to reveal the White Sky Horse, only to find that she isn't there. Whoops. The Fuhrer then starts to sweat a little and doesn't know what to do after a recycled sound effect. <laughs> then suddenly, out of nowhere, the Black Sky Horse appears. Turns out the Black Sky Horse made a prank call to the Fuhrer and came back from the dead, making the prophecy true. The Black Sky Horse goes around the area and terrorizes and swears at the ponies. Does my crown no longer count? And just generally becomes a badass. Starscream thinks this is as good a time as any to offer her sacrifices to become an almighty demon lord. But when she asks, <laughs> you know what happens? She gets shut down! <laughs> Starscream then swears revenge on the Black Sky Horse, and the episode ends. Uh, I kind of don't like how it says to be continued though. Oh god. Now what did I think of this overall? Was it as good as everyone says? Honestly, it's okay. Not fantastic, just okay. It had pretty good writing, but seemed a bit too inappropriate and tryhard to be a kids show. So I have a hard time thinking what the target audience was. I kind of wish I knew what happened to the cousin in the oven as well, because that stuff's important. Um, overall rating though, I'd probably give the show around a 7 out of 10. I wouldn't continue watching the series, but I would masturbate again. 